So my name is Ing. Good afternoon. My name is Pam. We are going to present the Thai clothing culture. So uh, this is uh, in Bang Rai Wai, Mon Pin community, Chiang Mai. It's actually the land of Thai Yai. They have resided here for over 100 years, and we have a lot of migrant Thai Yai. And they are actually migrating, has been migrating from Myanmar, also due to political reasons, but they're actually dependent on each other, on the economy, uh, with common culture and religion. So the main uh, occupation of people in the community is actually agriculture and contractors. So this is actually a map of this community. So Wat Sun Trawat is actually the center of this community. And this particular map actually shows the local sage and people who are involved in uh, this. And Rong Rian Ba Mieng Wai School is actually promoting uh, people to wear traditional clothes. And also the sub-district or uh, local organizations, they have developed the museum. So uh, Ba Mieng Wai is not the only place you can find the Thai Yai traditional clothes. There are other places as well in Nao Son and Chiang Rai. So there are other people who are involved uh, in this particular tradition, Kudang, who has worked a long work with Thai Yai community, Kupasud, who is the local sage who teaches at Lat Meng Wai. We also have the youth uh, community group and they act as the main facilitators. Also, we also have Mon Bing, uh, Company Limited, who is actually uh, the community tourism company so Thai Yai, the uh, traditional clothes, is actually represents uh, the culture and it has been passed on from uh, traditions. So Thai Yai is important because we actually would wear our traditional clothes in, on special occasions like in weddings and important events. And it, it actually represents how the Thai Yai community is actually proud of their heritage. So why we want to try to preserve this Thai Yai clothing culture. So, you know, when Thai Yai people wear their traditional clothes, uh, we don't feel different. And actually it, it gives us the sense of belonging as we have histories and where we are. So these are the components of the Thai Yai costumes is actually uh, wearing the two types of head piece, uh, a hat and also a headband. And the hat is actually woven from bamboos. And uh, we have a blouse with, you know, uh, front buttons. And we also have bags. And one of the things that is, uh, is important is the bag because the way of life of Thai Yai, uh, they are always in the forest and working in agricultural sector. So this particular bag is really important to put food and necessary uh, belongings. So this is the costume for, for the Thai, Thai Yai. Uh, they actually wear a shirt like this and pants, and uh, they also have the headpiece as well, and they have similar bag. In the past, they also have a sword as one of their weapons, uh, or they use it for hunting. So both men and women, uh, it's going to, uh, these uh, has evolved uh, through time. Sometimes uh, there are zippers that has been placed, or uh, sometimes the clothes are made to be fitting, uh, to be more modern, but everything actually shows uh, the unique uh, characteristics of Thai Yai, uh, which is relevant to their beliefs and political political system. The headpiece, uh, the, there are two ways uh, that you can do, that you can wear them. So it's similar actually uh, to uh, the, the dance of the birds. So this is actually relevant to religious beliefs and actually the bird is actually welcoming the Buddha ascending uh, from heaven. So Thai Yai, uh, they actually uh, incorporate uh, the colors of their flags into their clothing, which shows the freedom and the unity of Thai Yai. So people who are involved uh, with this clo clothing or this clothing culture is actually the weavers. So 70 years, the uh, weavers were here, but after they don't have a collective group, they actually set up the uh, weaving center in uh, Metai or Wieng Ha. Ban Bieng Wai, we select uh, these weavers because people uh, are workers mostly in the communities. 
but uh, sometimes they don't weave themselves, but they buy uh, clothes. So this is actually an image of the merit making ceremony at the temple. The community is involved with the weaving uh, of the clothes as well. So people who are sewers, uh, who actually are seamstress, they're actually work and actually produce uh, clothes. Most of them, you know, are elderly, which shows, you know, uh, they, and they have skills. So people who sell this tai yai uh, clothing, uh, uh, sometimes they have stores, sometimes they go uh, to outlets, sometimes they they actually buy clothes from Racha. Uh, most of them, the clothes they're selling are modernized. So what we did was that we went in and uh, interviewed people who are still wearing traditional clothes. And uh, the youth usually wear, you know, um, when their school tell them to do so. So um, the risk and the threats that we face uh, in this particular case, like, like uh, the youth are not so interested and they don't know how to actually, you know, make this type of clothing anymore. Also the current economy, they people really can't afford and most of the Paiyai people are actually not wearing uh, the traditional clothes anymore. Moreover, Monpin district is not actually the main tourist destination. So our group actually realized, you know, we have proposed this uh, project to the community to promote their heritage. And this actually will enable the community to promote this particular heritage and also promote tourism. So the project they're interested in is actually the conservation of Tai Yai yeah, in order to develop through the interactive museum. So this particular uh, museum that you see is located in Pratatalam Pakia Temple. So the budget that we're planning is about 254,900 baht uh, for the period of one year. So this activity, we want to promote uh, the proper wearing of this particular uh, costume. And uh, we will have Tai Yai uh, locals to show them how to wear, uh, how people to wear. And we can also come up with digital media in order to promote uh, uh, the, the, the evolution of the Tai Yai. Uh, and then we want to develop websites and maybe develop a game uh, so um, those visitors can actually scan QR codes to get access. And also we want to try to be able to uh, send or market uh, this particular Tai Yai uh, out into the market. So uh, the implementation in the short term, our budget is going to be allocated to uh, teachers or youth in Monbin uh, or the local sage who are involved with this particular heritage. And uh, we have uh, allocated a budget into the meetings, the media development. But in the long run, we all have also planned that we want to try to promote through the local uh, radios and using the budget about 73,000. And also we have allocated some budget for the tour guide training. So how is this project going to benefit the livelihood of the people in the community? First, uh, I think it's great to promote uh, the interest uh, of these youth to be able to see the values of their heritage. Secondly, uh, this actually enable more income for the people who work as seamstress and women in the community. And thirdly, this actually promotes a local tourism so uh, people can actually, visitors can actually purchase and buy Tai Yai yeah, clothes. And lastly, so this particular project is actually the start because Monpin community, we do have other heritage that needs to be conserved. And I think we would like the opportunity into the future to be able to promote this, uh, promote our heritage in the platform in the future. Um, thank you so much for, for your presentation, um, the, the way that you have outlined the process of identifying what the problems are and then coming up with your solution was very, very clear to me. Um, I also think the mechanism that you're using to safeguard um, the cultural heritage of the Taiyin clothing culture by using um, digital technology is also, uh, you know, another very interesting way. So similar to the first um, 
group using the power of social media, you're, you've kind of, you're pushing yours a little bit further um, through having an interactive museum. Um, but you're not just stopping there, you're also considering other kind of modes of technology as well, like using radio, which I think will also increase uh, the reach of um, ensuring um, your messaging is reaching um, a, a much broader audience as well. And you're also considering tour guide training. So you've got, you've got a lot of ideas um, in there. And I think the collective approach of um, considering the social and the economic uh, impact of the community is, is a really strong project. So thank you so much. Uh, for, for your efforts in, in trying to preserve um, the Thai clothing culture. Um, please, uh, Ajahn Parita, comment. Please, Ajahn Parita, the former director of Princess Mahajakri Srinpon Anthropology Center. Uh, working with the Thai uh, Mountain team, and thank you, Julia, for your comments. Uh, I'll give my comments in Thai. Right. Uh, so thank you very much this team so the your presentation was very comprehensive and a lot of content so i have three points uh, to uh, provide provide give you so before using technology or interactive museum as an instrument to, to promote uh, the thai yai clothing I think it's important to collect all the details, uh, particular to uh, the uh, Thai Yai clothing cultures, particularly in Mon Pin, and see how it's different from other Thai Yai in the northern part of Thailand. Because in the north, we have a lot of Thai Yai communities, and some communities has long been in Thailand over uh, several hundred years, and they have you know unique uh, clothing uh, cultures. So we, I want to know how Monpin is different from other uh, Thai Yai. The second question is, when you say that uh, the elderly or the people who are proud when they you know wear their Thai Yai culture costumes. But the youth, sometimes they only wear it when they have to, you know, to, to schools because it's part of uh, the school requirement. So I sense some resistance, you know, of wearing these traditional clothes. So uh, my question to you is how do you convince them, you know, to be able to, you know, uh, see Thai Yai clothes as the, you know, a modern trend? And the third point is developing this community museum or interactive museum is actually a very challenging idea. I want you to see the picture in the long run because interactive museums in Thailand and the, there's about like uh, 1300 of them all over Thailand and I have been following uh, these museums. So uh, community museums are very hard uh, to develop and it needs uh, resources like people, knowledge or the network, you know, to make the museum work. And many museums, you know, it was flourishing, but not a long time, you know, it's, uh, it doesn't really survive. So, you know, establishing a museum is not an easy task yeah, and, and for it to be sustainable is not easy either. So. If you really want to pursue that, uh, I want you to consider uh, management and sustainability of it and for it to come alive really. And, and how do we provide continuous support to the museum and be sustainable? So these are the three observations, but on the overall, I'm very excited to hear and you had a great presentation. So to answer the question of the difference between Thai Yai culture, so yes, we definitely, they're definitely distinct. And if we continue to work, if we get the opportunity to work on this, we'll definitely find out. And traditionally, Thai Yai, they have lived for a long time, but Mon Pin, uh, they also have various groups, whether they're migrants who's been here for a long time, uh, those uh, war refugees, and those who come as workers. So you can see uh, the, the differences in their cultures. So Me Hong Son yeah, is a bit more like Myanmar. I think it's up to the two of us to seek more information on this. 
And to answer your uh, comment on getting the youth interested in Thai Yai cultures, and because if they are Thai Yai, we want to try to minimize the bias that they have in their local cultures. And sometimes they feel ashamed of wearing Thai Yai. They have because it doesn't represent as a modern day uh, costumes. So what we're trying to do is we want to uh, make them proud. If uh, we can create this as a great trend, I think we should be able to gain the youth's attention. And uh, about your last comment on the museum, we realize that uh, there is a great challenge ahead of us, but I think we are fortunate uh, that we are getting the support by the temple and the abbot. Uh, who is actually uh, very keen on uh, this particular idea. And we do have uh, cooperation from the uh, local administration office and one bin company limited, who is actually promoting the local tourism. So if we get visitors, we get tourists, I think we are going to get a lot of attention to our museum. And our museum, we also have coffee shop, and it's also a space where they can sell products. So if we get cooperation from uh, all the stakeholders and we get financial support, even if it's challenging, I think it's still possible. Uh, please, uh, Jutendra Marceline, uh, yes. founder and owner of Nature Center and Handwoven Fabric Atelier Lao PDR. Thank you, UNESCO, for the opportunity, and thank you for the team for a wonderful presentation. The first thing I would like to say, and I'd like to build this on what uh, Julia and the previous commentator said, is that um, the challenges you face are not unique to you. You are going to have the same type of bias, the same type of difficulty in uh, marketing and protecting the skills. But I can tell you that having worked three and a half years in Laos and the Mekong with weavers and with right down to the grassroots level, what you have is bold. Your skill is actually intellectual property. And I like, I don't have much time to talk about intellectual property on this comment, but I'd like to just tell you that in the information age, uh, the uniqueness of your living heritage is very valuable. Now, you talk about tourism, yes. You talk about uh, museums and libraries, yes. All that is fantastic. But there is a saying in English that says, you know, class is permanent and um, form is temporary. And you buy, you buy uh, Apple or, or Samsung because you trust the quality. So I can just commend to you to say that if you persist and look at how you can add to the value chain and quality in terms of the yarn, in terms of the process, not just the end product and show the world how it is done, not just what is done, I believe very strongly, and that is from experience, that you can protect, you can nurture, you can develop, and you can grow this market into a real industry. Um, the, 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 the problem I see, the big challenge I see, especially um, to give people like you a hand up, not a hand down, is the fact that you think in terms of handicraft alone. But if you look at the developed industrial markets, the boutique markets, of uh, Italy, of France, of lace making, of Xenia. They are small cottage industries like you who have created industries. So I'd like you to think a little bit, and I don't think that's an answer on this call, and I will say this message right through the next couple of days, to think how you can talk to all the stakeholders, especially those who provide uh, financing uh, to, to, to continue with your project, to uh, not just financing for the end product, but working capital. Look at how you can build structures of uh, sustainability, not just in terms of buzzwords, but in actual terms of wages and promotions and marketing. And you have great platforms like Facebook, as Julia pointed out, uh, to take that whole story, not just the end product, but the whole process of the beautiful process of weaving, hand woven, planting, growing, celebrating, as you pointed out, to the world. And I believe very strongly, and I say this again and again, that in the mass, mass consumerism, what you have is truly gold, okay? So I wish you the best and I'll say the comments again and you can always talk to me again uh, in the next couple of days. Thank you. Thank you so much.